Well, this is the weekend before Valentine's Day, and many couples are looking to go out and have a nice dinner together. So why not celebrate at a Detroit landmark where guests have wined and dined for over 50 years, one of my favorite places. Michelle Oliver takes us to dine in the D at the London Chop House. Welcome to the world famous London Chop House. Decked in rich leather and dark wood with top of the line steaks grilling in the kitchen, the London Chop House looks like a place Don Draper would go for dinner and cocktails. It had the Mad Men era feel where a lot of martinis and uh, smoking was chic back then. It was very automotive centric back then, driven by the advertising companies. Les Gruber originally opened this place as the London Bar in 1938, but then changed its name to the London Chop House in 1939. Les Gruber was very iconic. He was ahead of his time. He took people over to Europe. He learned the culinary and the wine. They had custom-made matches for every occasion. There was a card that gave you back the dime for calling to place the reservation. The restaurant closed in the 90s, but it was restored and opened again in 2012. You see all range of emotions when they come down the stairs. They're reliving their past, and it's been an absolute ball to uh, be a part of. While it still has the same class and charm, they have updated a few things, like their menu. Based on the reputation that the London Chop House had back in its heyday, uh, we had very large shoes to fill, and we needed to create a menu that replicated what people would want uh, as a reminiscent type thing, and we need to entice modern diners as well. They are best known for their steaks, but I wanted to make another popular dish, the lamb chops. We take our double bone French lamb chops, brushed with a little vegetable oil. Salt, and a little bit of pepper. Yep. Lamb racks have a lot of fat on them, so we've trimmed it down quite a bit. Okay. However, lamb fat tastes good, so we like to have you a little bit left some. on there. Yeah. Correct. And then the secret is the sear. Ooh. And it is hot. It is warm right here. This is, a, this is a warmer than average station back here. As those sear, we start on the ratatouille. A little bit of olive oil, touch of garlic and shallot. Ooh. And this is like freshly minced garlic too. Yes. So we started out on low heat. Okay. Uh, when you have something that's that's this uh, small, when it's this minced up, it'll burn quickly. You can hear it a little bit too now. It's a little sizzle. As soon as you start to see a little brown mm -hmm. and it becomes aromatic, we're ready to go. We adjust the lamb chops for an even sear. Put them on their fat cap side. That's a very large piece of fat that's covering the loin. So yeah. if you give that a little bit of a render, the flavor will impart and it'll be easy, easier to eat. They finish in the oven as we add some roasted veggies to the ratatouille. Traditional ratatouille is um, a mixture of ingredients, uh, zucchini, squash, tomato, bell pepper, onion, uh, eggplant. And then traditionally it's a stew. So you bake it in either a tomato sauce or a light tomato puree. We don't want it to be too runny, but we also don't want it to be just the vegetables by themselves. And so this is what we put in it? That is our tomato basil coulis. Once everything's done cooking, we plate it up with a mint basil pesto to finish the dish. Hot damn, the Live in the D Orchestra sounds great. <laughs> we do. recorded that yesterday afternoon just for the piece. Joining us today in studio, RJ Shear. He's the executive chef of the London Shop House. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Now, this spread is beautiful. Tell us what you brought in. Sure. Uh, after what you just saw in our little montage there, we have our Australian uh, lamb chops, basil mint pesto, vegetable ratatouille, and then a couple of the big hitters on the menu going around are our 24 ounce bone in ribeye. Okay, now uh, I've often wondered about the whole bone in thing because you see it's done by the way, 24 ounce, and then mm -hmm. how much is the bone weigh, and well, how much steak do you get, get versus mm -hmm. the bone? Two to three ounces of bone per, per ribeye. Yeah. Okay, and is it better to have the bone in? Does it add to the flavor through the, f somehow? Out in my personal opinion, when you have the bone on in a braising application like a short rib or an asabuco or an oxtail, that's where you're gonna get the most flavor. Okay. Uh, a bone in filet, you're gonna be able to get a little bit more, but this specific one, not so okay, much. Here. Okay, here. This is our Oysters Rockefeller. Right there. Oysters Rockefeller is a very old school dish. It originated in Antoine's in New Orleans and uh, before 1900. The recipe has done a lot of changing since then, but okay. this is an original one to the London Chop House from back in the 70s. Very nice, and what is that next? 
The next one is our Australian Wagyu A4 New York Strip. That is, uh, that's the winner on the menu for me. I tell everybody if I were to be eating at, this, at the restaurant, that's what I would get. Okay. And then the next one we have is our, uh, a new item that came out on Monday. It is an ahi tuna and salmon crudo Lovely. with a ginger lime vinaigrette, uh, pickled vegetables, radish, and toasted sesame. So there's a, a piece of tuna underneath cool. there. There is. There's chopped up salmon ahi. and tuna. Crudo yeah. in Italian means raw. So essentially mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just raw fish. Um, and then we finish with uh, everybody's uh, go-to, uh, the filet. That's my go-to. The fillet <laughs> mignon. The fillet mignon. Yeah. <laughs> it's delicious. Okay, so why does, okay, if flavor comes from fat, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, and you get the ribboning in a steak, they say marbling, well, the mo marbling mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the more the, the steak has, the cut has, the better it is. But like a filet isn't quite like that. So why is the filet considered so choice compared to something that has a lot of marbling? Filet has uh, the, one of the least amount of fats in in the steaks you see today, but it has the most uh, tenderness ah. to it. It is the least used muscle in the animal, which okay. means it, it breaks down a little bit easier. Um, the other cuts, like the ribeye and the New York strip, the ribeye obviously has a lot of fat, mm -hmm. um, the big eye in the middle of it. Well, and there's then, the filet right now. Now, is yeah. there a, a type of person that prefers, like, the texture of the softness of the meat over the flavor from the marbling? Absolutely. Um, but I feel like it still has flavor. I don't know. Maybe it's a different flavor? It does because we put a nice sear on it. We only okay. use salt and pepper, and then we get the nice sear on both sides. And then if there was a, an accompaniment to the filet, it would be our Bernays or our Apoil sauce. Stop it. You're making me hungry. I know. <laughs> All right. Where are you located? <laughs> we are actually just around the corner from you. We're on 155 West Congress uh, in the corner of Congress in Shelby. Yes. Lovely place. I love the ambiance too. Thank you. Very nice. All right. Also, if you want to try out London Chop House, we are giving away one $200 gift card for your chance to win. Go to our Live in the D Facebook page or the contest page at clickondetroit.com. We also started a Dine in the D group on our Facebook. Please join it to see all the places that we cover. Get suggestions on places to dine out and share your favorite meals from local eateries. Thank you, Chef, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you for having me.